motion. Right, and I will amend my motion to say, would you like to remove the um, 11A from that since the attorney won't be here? Actually, I prefer to um, to leave it there for a brief update. From a conversation, just a brief well, update. And, and just to be clear on that one, uh, eleven A. There's three of them there. A is to consult with the attorney, so so we could still have a closed session and handle B and C, but A is one that you would not be able to have in the absence of the attorney. Not with the attorney, but I'd certainly like to convey um, information. Well, we can't well, consult with him, he's not here. We're not going to consult with him. There's no reason to have 11A. Let's just, do, let's just take off 11A and do um, B and C, then we just do those two. And, um, all right. You can, Dina, you're amending the motion to delete 11A. Go ahead. And is your motion to approve the whole consent agenda? Well, I was, I was amending my motion oh, to, to the approve. Well, what what is happened to 11A since he's not here and this is a time sensitive, well, we'll just issue. That's what I would, that's why I would prefer to leave it. That's why I would prefer to leave it. But, but it's a time sensitive issue, correct? I, I feel like he would say since we don't have an attorney president in closed session, you can't consult with one. So, regardless of how much we would like to have that discussion, I think that would be. Well, I disagree. Way. I disagree. Or, uh, there was a conversation that um, would be conveyed. Can it move to the 16th meeting? It needs. It is well, it would have to be. It's, it's going to be moved to the 16th meeting. Can we do that? Yeah. We'll move it to the uh, 16th. Okay, we're going to have second amendment, approve the agenda, remove 11A, um, but 11 um, A, B, and C would um, be on the agenda next week, Tuesday, the 16th. We have a special call meeting at the Lutheran Church. Do you want to still B discuss B and C? And yes. Tonight? Yes. Okay, and just move. Yeah, we can get rid of so does our A to the 16th meeting? Well, I think we just... A, B, and C can be at the 16th meeting. Do you want to just leave it at 11A and then we'll deal with the agenda tomorrow? Yeah, if, All right. what, to keep it cleaner, if we don't <laughs> even talk about what's going to be moved to next week, let's just deal with... We're doing, it sounds like we want to delete A and leave B and C for tonight. Um, no, I would like to, I'd like to satisfy that um, 11A is being, is being postponed until next week. Okay, I mean, we can certainly reflect that in the minutes, but yes. For the purpose of the motion, we're the removing the limit. Yeah, if I if I just uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of eleven A for tonight. Yeah, we need a second. Can I offer an amendment to the agenda? It's a, you're making a motion to approve the meeting agenda, not the consent agenda. Just the just the meeting agenda, correct? Well, That's the consent all agenda, or, I'm sorry, the I'm consent sorry. agenda includes A, the meeting agenda, B, the adoption of open no. closed session. And we need a motion just to approve the meeting, the meeting agenda. agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting agenda with the removal of the 11A. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Um, we have adoption of a number of sets of minutes. Um, is there, I'm going to start with, um, I'd like to start with the, um, the minutes for the UDL meeting from November 15th. Do we have a motion to approve the UDL minutes from November 15th? Well, just, just for clarity, we, so, so the committees themselves approve their minutes, so the only thing that's before you tonight is approving the open and closed session minutes for December 12th. No, I'm going to ask, but because there's comments on, on each of these. Okay, well, I, probably the best way to handle that. Let me is just go ahead. You know what? Those. Um, I'm requesting a motion to approve the UDO minutes from the November 15th. We can't approve the minutes for a meeting when Then at. we'll discuss them. All right, I, I need a motion to discuss the minutes from November 15th. I have a problem with those. If you look at those <coughs> minutes, 
If, if you would, please let me, let me get those real quick, because I, I wasn't prepared to uh, learn on anything that I wasn't at. Well, I'll pull out the whole thing. I'm not going to make the problem with it. Okay. If you look at the UDO, the first problem I see is the December 7th meeting. Oh, I had November 15th first. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. What problem you got with November 15th? I'm just I'm just separating them individually because there are different concerns, but um, okay. okay. Well, on this one, it's where. Okay, so you would rather you're asking to discuss the November, the December seventh UDO minutes, which is concerning the November fifteenth minutes. Okay. <laughs> it says that Kathy Rooney took Dick Faulkner's place. That's that's not the UDO. That's the zoning board, right? No, it's yeah. UDO December seventh. Kathy Rooney, remember she comes in. Oh, you were oh, there. Um. Yeah, you were. Remember Kathy took this place that it says in the December 7th meeting, Gary Brown went to approve the November minutes with the correction of Kathy Rooney as the attendant ex officio instead of the former. They were never changed in the minutes to reflect Kathy Rooney. So it would be Kathy Rooney instead of Dick Fulner on the November 15th? Yes. Okay. For the UDO minutes for November 15th and December 7th, is there, are there any other um, corrections? No, so, or comments? Please, go ahead. Comment. Um, <clears throat> the public comment section it said, Mr. McCall presented the committee with that on the current housing market. <clears throat> Excuse me, current housing on the market. This is a gross exaggeration. Mr. McCall is not a licensed real estate agent. She's a marketing person who ran in a marketing firm for a long time and worked for Summerfield Farms. Her numbers were not accurate. I went back and checked them. There's a lot of information that was didn't let out, and that is very deceiving to the committee because they don't know the same difference. So I just want to point out the fact that she titled this the current housing on the market, but it did not fully cover most of the housing that was on the market. It was a very pieced out type of uh, presentation. So does, do we need to talk about um, with Karen? And the committee chair maybe getting some different type of marketing or market data. I have market another analysis. idea about this. Um, where is me. Why, why, because why? I'm addressing Todd. Um, I want to I want to stay focused on what Todd had to say. Can you Todd say Can you say where this was? Which meeting? December seventh. <clears throat> just see what we see and what we can direct here. Um, okay. John. So, so is that something we need to talk with the committee chair about to find to get better or more accurate market analysis in your mind? I mean, you know, that's something I, I think we, we all agree we want to put yeah, the best I, data in front of the committee that we can. A couple of meetings back, there was discussion about bringing in more professionals in various areas because most people in the committee are really spending a lot of time on this, but the over vast majority of people in the committee do not have a background in planning or zoning or construction or real estate. So to no fault of theirs, they don't know, they don't have a background in that. And so it did come up that we need to start bringing in some professionals with the school system, various different areas that can bring in a little bit more information, which would help them with a little bit more discussion and that type of thing. And I know that's something they were trying to do in the last meeting. Somebody was supposed to come to the yeah, campus. The school board. We, we moved some things around. So I know there are things in the works to do that. And it definitely would enhance people on the committee, their understanding a little bit better of what's going on. Right. Okay. Also, can I make a comment on this? Yes. Um, I don't know if the rest of the council is aware of this. They have a secretary on the UDO. She left her reasons, and they have not replaced her. So what they're doing is just drawing names out of someone picking them to be secretary. So I think the UDO needs to sit down and pick a secretary so we don't continue to have major problems with the minutes. I'll take that. I'll take that too. Thank and you. I would suggest that um, corrections be made to November 15th and December 7th. Um, no, and Did return, you? and I'm suggesting those be corrections be made and this be returned to the council to approve the February meeting. Madam Mayor, your, your recommendation for the December 7th meeting to remove a public comment? 
because she's not a committee member, she's just making a public comment. We, we shouldn't No, I didn't say remove that. Um, with the correction, um, what needs to be fixed when some stuff I didn't follow anything else other than that being the issue. We don't need to correct Kathy Rooney and Senator Dick Fulmer. Okay, so the corrections need to be made to the November 15th meeting. Um, and um, is there any way, um, Todd, is there any way that um, we could, um, is there anything that we should um, suggest as far as you know, the, um, the specificity of what was presented um, to the committee as, as, expert, as expert housing information? Um, well, I think going forward, it should be very clear. If somebody is an expert in the field, it's presented that way. Um, I mean, the public comment section is, of course, is available for anybody to get up and speak. But again, it, it's not a debate. I mean, we just kind of need to be careful that that's not going to be. I I do I do think it's important though um, that sometime in a future UDO meeting that um, that, that information be discussed mm -hmm. and um, you know with. With um, perhaps um, additional information about uh, more accurate numbers, because it was important. If, if I could offer a suggestion uh, to, to address the council's concerns about committee minutes, um, if if you would like to pass along all of those concerns directly to the committee to deal with them, right. I think that's more appropriate than entertaining any kind of action from. Council, but it's really not appropriate for but there was council. no opportunity. There was no opportunity um, to do that we have a meeting before this. So, before this meeting. Meeting, so, so maybe, maybe after the discussion of your concerns, you, you form that in in a way that it's you're passing that along to the committee. So see, this is why I'm saying uh, I want the minutes early, and I think it becomes an open meeting law if you sit there and discuss, hey, there's these problems. I'd like for it to be done, too, instead of sitting here and spending 15 minutes on minutes, you know? I don't think we've ever actually spent time on minutes from a committee before. Mm -hmm. right. and, and so we have a policy yeah. for committee minutes specifically. So that policy dictates when the chair of that committee, or when the secretary of a particular committee gets the draft minutes to the committee <coughs> chair, and then that policy dictates when the committee chair gets it to town clerk and then that falls in line with the process of getting the um, getting those minutes to you within the agenda packet. So, so we've got a process there and you know what I'm hearing is some concerns about minutes that have some that have been passed or maybe some that are still drafted when you finish this discussion but if we could just Note those in a productive way and pass them along to the committees. And if it takes me or someone or a liaison to the UDA committee to go and specifically address your concerns with that committee, that might change. That might get them tracking more of the way you want them to drop. Some of this, some of these are just simple corrections for accuracy, and it's going to be. <coughs> this might be a more efficient. Efficient. Um, I'm wondering What's though, I'm What's on the UDO committee minutes. Um, show, are we looking for a motion to make the to, or are we just looking for a recommendation to bring the, to make the correction and bring it back to us at the next meeting? I would think that the committee members would want the minutes to be accurate. If somebody made a mistake, I'm sure it was an honest mistake. I, I would think that they would want to correct it if we say, hey, we noticed in such and such minute, you know, meeting minutes, there was this error. Can you please correct it for the record? I don't so, think you take that to the UDO? Yeah, and, and, and you know, the, U, the UDO committee is a very important committee. They have a very important charge. I have one, one comment from December 7th that the um, that Bill Hill, the paid consultant, is um, mentioned that the committee should revisit the idea of a land use plan. And that's far beyond the charter of the UDO. Um, and I'm, I don't like the idea of a consultant going in there and saying, well, maybe you should consider, you think about a land use plan, and everyone said, oh, yeah, let's do that. Well, land use plans are very controversial because it's the government telling people what they can do with their land. And it's, it's, not, it's not in the charter. So that's <coughs> I, Did you want to share that with Bill, or I'll share it with them when I, I see would, it. When 
I would say is that the committee understands their charge is not to develop a land use plan. Their charge is to make recommendations to the zoning board to um, ensure that the UDO, the draft UDO, is, in, is congruent with the comprehensive plan. That's literally That's what I'm saying. I so they don't. <laughs> so if they, what, I think what they've done is they they're not saying we should we meaning the UDO committee develop a land use plan. They're suggesting they're they're making a recommendation that the zoning board consider. Uh, uh, developing a land use plan. That's I, where it would go. I agree with you, but my concern says Bill Hill mentioned the committee should revisit the idea of a land name, use plan. It was named on Bill Hill. Bill McNeil. Bill McNeil. McNeil. All right, mentioned. So that's so going to be another error. It's a comment. <laughs> right. that, that's a comment. Um, are, then are you going to make corrections and they send them back to us for February? Or just, oh, are you okay if they just make the corrections? And, no. No. Make the corrections and. You prefer to stay in February. Okay, it will yeah. go fast in February, I'm sure. And at the next meeting, I'll, just, I'll uh, bring up the land use plan and, and find out whether the committee, which I'm fairly certain is probably not fair, that they have not said they should develop a land use plan, that they may have made a recommendation. The consultant said that. The consultant said they should. That's my concern. Okay, um, Founders Day committee minutes, December 14th. Um, are there any comments? Yeah, I got a comment as to is this an official meeting? I believe it says a quorum was not present, so no formal business was transacted. Right. There's other general other than a general discussion. Well, there was general discussion about what happened or what you want to do at the Founders Day. Right. And, to me, and, and that is general discussion, and to me, that was constituting an open business meeting, and it should not have happened. So, to me, and Scott, we need to look at this. I have looked at the committee, mm -hmm. and I've been on committees, just like several of us up here has. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a quorum, you know, if you go back to the minutes, and even in your thing, it says you open up the meeting, you do a roll call. If you don't have a form, it doesn't say what to do in the committee. Board. So, so here's how we handled that meeting. There, there was not a quorum. Uh, there are certain things about Founders Day that cannot just wait uh, longer. So, so some of the committee members uh, had some discussion about general things about Founders Day, planning just to get a sense of what the committee was thinking, and then uh, internally uh, we acted on some of that at a staff level. And um, <coughs> but as far as making motions, uh, we didn't have a quorum, and uh, we got a challenge with that committee because uh, we are required to have five. Uh, res five resident members, and uh, we have two at present. And I talked with uh, with our attorney about how to, how should we deal with that because uh, we you know we don't have the minimum number that's required. And he said um, he felt the best approach was to go with what we have of what we have voting members. Do we have a quorum of fifty percent? And so that's how we'll proceed from here on out. But as far as uh, making motions, um, you can see we, we can go there. But if you look under General Session 143, 318, it plainly states, you know, official meeting, we a meeting of a majority of members. We didn't have a majority of members. You know, and to me, and that's, that's that why you don't like, see motions in there. This was a legal meeting of an open meeting law, and it should be stricken. Well, it was appropriately advertised, and like I said, there's some not, some things we needed some direction on, and we made that, those that not decisions the thing. It's staff. States. If you don't have a quorum, so you are not we, doing that business. So what do we do to help fix that, Scott? Do we need to it lower the quorum, the, the number for a quorum, or do we, or or what do we do to help make sure that especially that committee is able to we need to bring more citizen volunteers for Founders Day? That's why we bring. But it doesn't need to be in the ordinance. If you don't have a quorum, you have to shut it down and go home. It needs to be put in the ordinance. There's no way for the committees to know, because not everybody knows what the open meetings law is. Everybody 
to understand that? I think you, I what would you like to see happen? I think I understand that. that. Thank you so much, Trace, for the knowledge. But I think I, what I'm understanding is that Teresa wants to tell us what we're supposed to do. This no, is a committee that we have set up by the council, and I agree that we need to make it clear. And you check with the attorney. So I think that would be really excellent to proceed with that suggestion. And if we can get some more members who would like to be on the committee, then that, that would be able to attend the meetings. That would be lovely, too. Teresa did have a conversation with Bill Hill about <coughs> this. So this isn't just, you know, what the, the conversation, this isn't coming out. What is the action you would like? We have, it's difficult now because um, he isn't here on this particular item. Right. Teresa, um, do you have any thoughts about, um, you know, Checking, you're looking at if there isn't, if quorum is not present, do you adjourn or do you continue to discuss business? And Bill has a guy. Those of us you do a roll call, and that's when you find out whether you have a quorum or not. Right. And then you need to show that that go on. Or you continue, or the way the way this particular Founders Day meeting, they recognized they didn't have a quorum, but they continued. So with Founders Day, I know that some folks are new here. It's a pretty big event and takes up quite a bit of planning. <coughs> if we were to just never have any discussion about Founders Day because we didn't have a quorum of members, Founders Day would not happen because we don't have the no, members on the, on the council there. You move the meeting to another day. We actually can't actually fill the spots. So we would never be able to have the meeting according to the consolidated committee with us. So if you want to break the law just because no, of Founders Day? No, ma'am, but I think discussion can be had to put on an event for the citizens, I do believe that's that's fine. Yes, so the, the only action that I think is somewhat appropriate here is to have the Founders Day Committee take these minutes out, and that's a Founders Day Committee call, not an us call. But you're right, this really shouldn't have been in the minutes, but it's here. It's not it's not the end of the world that that we had good people discussing well, what's going to happen. That's why I'm asking Scott to well, make sure the committee is on what to do in this situation. So not the next situation when we when we clearly don't have a quorum, and like I said, it's been questionable because of that low citizen um, involvement. But there's what four vacancies on that committee? Three vacant, three citizen vacancies. Um, so we'll just say that if if there's not clearly a quorum based on how the attorney said for me to interpret that in this case. And everybody will just go home, and and then we'll and then we'll proceed if there's something really pressing and we have to make a decision at the staff level. We'll do that and report it back to the Founders Day Committee, and that should take care of that. Cool. Okay. Um, we also have uh, two sets of for uh, December 12th. Um, there's uh, maybe we can combine these, uh, maybe not. Um, for December 12th, we have minutes uh, for the for the general meeting. Are there any? Um, does anyone have corrections? December, I'm sorry, December 12th, the town council yeah. meeting. Yes, I have all the Okay. Um, page four. Correction that. You go down three quarters of the way. Um, where the first word starts is adopted budget ordinance. And it says, Dunham also questions if three council members meeting together is considered a violation of the open meeting law. That's actually not done, and that should be Walker that asked that question. And you're aware you're on page four? Tracing that. Section F. Okay. Five, four, five lines from the bottom. First sentence. Donald, no, no, question. The bottom one. That's actually Walker. Four, five, yes, that should be Walker question, not Donald. You're correct. And what? I got a question. What if we have problems with the closed session minutes? How do we handle that? Well, we'll see when we get there. Any other um, any yes. other corrections for December 12th? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I think we've discussed uh, the duty to vote in North Carolina and um, on new business A, selection of Mayor Pro Tem. 
Okay. Uh, it says it passed 3 to 0 with Fever and Road Truck abstaining. Even though they abstained, would it not be a 5 to 0 vote? It's uh, mm -hmm. just letting you know that it was, it was actually a 3 2 vote. Uh, oh, that's right. Y'all voted, voted against on that one. Is that correct? Um, yes, that's correct. So that's, yeah, correct. That's 3 2. And then on <coughs> is where it was 3 0 with an extension. It should be 5 0 with yes. an extension. It should be 3 It should be 3 0. And then let's just go back to that. And then. No, it should the, be 5 0 easily. Okay, I have just, again, a little not a good discussion about this. I read chapter and verse from Roger's rules. You cannot force somebody. We don't get. It's, we not, have, we it's, not, Robert, it's not Robert's rules no, of order. Here. I know it's what you're the state statute. That I know says it that. That's very clear in the state statute. Point of order. We discussed very this, and you the cannot, state statute. there's no one in the room I that's going to go, and, and you're out of order. Let me finish. I discussed this with the attorney. And you, there's no one in the room that can physically go over and pull someone's hand up in the air. Uh -huh. And the problem with that meeting was that Teresa and Todd couldn't hear, um, and they couldn't see, and, the, um, and it was suggested to go ahead and move, move ahead to vote. But um, they basically, they've written it very well. I can read it to you, but I'm trying to make this, uh, trying to be respectful of people's time. But basically, you cannot physically force someone to vote. Right. However, it can, it can still show that, you can show that they were in the affirmative, but you can't say that they voted three to two. Well, no, I'm not saying they, they voted three to two. Motion passed by the uh, no. In the state of North Carolina, the statute says you have to vote if you don't vote, unless you have a reason to refuse, and if you don't vote, you're counted in the affirmative of the motion. But that's the state still, statute. But you can also still recognize that they did not I vote. think that's what you should they say. They, they simply are. didn't vote. They, they said they abstained. The motion still five votes. But it still passes five deaths. I'm not saying let's say they voted that way. I'm saying it should read motion passed five votes with P. Roman Road Truck abstaining from the vote. That's, that's, that's the, all I'm saying. Accurate. I'm not saying they we force them to vote. I'm saying what is accurate and what the statute and says. And what's coming next here? I don't have anything next. Um, okay. I just want to be clear as we're... And that's three to two. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me just be clear that the, the first one, I mean, business item A, that last sentence should be three to two because big room and mm -hmm. road truck abstain. No. Because they voted, they voted 